Good morning to you on this Monday the 13th of March 2023. My name is Reverend Jo Richards, Rector here in Canterbury, St Dunstan, St Mildred's and St Peter's. And lovely that you've joined me this morning. It's quite windy out here in Canterbury this morning, but it's just about dry. So lovely that you've joined us for worship. So as we gather together in the season of Lent, O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our appointed psalm for this morning is Psalm 5. You, O Lord, will bless the righteous. Give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my lamentation. Hearken to the voice of my crying, my King and my God, for to you I make my prayer. In the morning, Lord, you will hear my voice. Early in the morning I make my appeal to you and look up. For you are the God who takes no pleasure in wickedness. No evil can dwell with you. The boastful cannot stand in your sight. You hate all those that work wickedness. You destroy those who speak lies. The bloodthirsty and deceitful the Lord will abhor. But as for me, through the greatness of your mercy, I will come into your house. I will bow down towards your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, Lord, in your righteousness. Because of my enemies, make your way straight before my face. For there is no truth in their mouth, in their heart is destruction. Their throat is an open sepulchre, they flatter with their tongue. Punish them, O God, let them fall through their own devices. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you be glad, let them sing out their joy for ever. You will shelter them so that those who love your name may exalt in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous, and with your favour you will defend them as with a shield. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading, uh, we're still with Jeremiah, and today it's chapter 11, and it's verses 1 through to 17. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, Hear the words of this covenant and speak to the peoples of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. You will say to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Cursed be anyone who does not heed the words of this covenant, which I commanded your ancestors when I brought them out of the land of Egypt, from the iron smelter, saying, Listen to my voice and do all that I command you. So shall you be my people, and I will be your God, that I may perform the oath that I swore to your ancestors, to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. And um, as at this day, then I answered, So be it, Lord. And the Lord said to me, Proclaim all these words in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. Hear the words of this covenant and do them. For I solemnly warned ancestors when I brought them up out of the land of Egypt, warning them persistently, even to this day, saying, Obey my voice. Yet they did not obey or incline their ear, but every one walked in the stubbornness of an evil one. So I brought, that, I brought upon them all the words of this covenant, which I commanded them to do, but they did not. And the Lord said to me, Conspiracy exists amongst the people of Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They have turned back to the iniquities of their ancestors of old, who refused to heed my words. 
They had gone after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken the covenant that I made with their ancestors. Therefore, thus says the Lord, assuredly, I am going to bring disaster upon them that they cannot escape. Though they cry out to me, I will not listen to them. Then the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem will go and cry out to the gods to whom they make offerings, but they will never save them in the time of their trouble. For your gods have become as many as your towns, O Judah, and as many as the streets of Jerusalem are the altars to shame that you have set up, altars to make offerings to Baal. As for you, do not pray for this people or lift up a cry or prayer on their behalf, for I will not listen when they call to me in the time of their troubles. What right has my beloved in my house when she has done vile deeds? Can vows and sacrificial flesh avert your doom? Can you then exult? The Lord once called you a green olive tree, fair with goodly fruit, but with the roar of a great tempest he will set fire to it and its branches will be consumed. The Lord of hosts who planted you has pronounced evil against you because of the evil that the house of Israel and the house of Judah have done, provoking me to anger by making offerings to Baal. And now for our canticle. Full of compassion and mercy and love is God the Most High, the Almighty. Lord Almighty and God of our ancestors, you who made heaven and earth in all their glory, all things tremble with awe at your presence before your great and mighty power. Immeasurable and unsearchable is your promised mercy. For you, God, for you are God most high. You are full of compassion, long-suffering and very merciful, and you relent at human suffering. O God, according to your great goodness, you have promised forgiveness for repentance to those who have sinned against you. The sins I have committed against you are more in number than the sands of the sea. I am not worthy to look up to the height of heaven because of the multitude of my iniquities. And now I bend the knee of my heart before you, imploring your kindness upon me. I have sinned, O God, I have sinned, and I acknowledge my transgressions. Unworthy as I am, you will save me, according to your great mercy. For all the host of heaven sings your praise, and your glory is for ever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our second reading this morning is from John, and it is chapter 7, and it's verses 37 through to 52. On the last day of the great festival, the, sorry, on the last day of the festival, the great day while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit which believers in him were to receive. For yes, yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. When they heard these words, some of the crowd said, This is really the prophet. Others said, This is the Messiah. For some are, Surely the Messiah does not come from Galilee, does he? Has not the scripture said that the Messiah is descended from David and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David lived? So there was a division in the crowd because of him. Some of them wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. Then the temple police went back to the chief priests and the Pharisees, who asked them, Why did you not arrest him? The police answered, Never has anyone spoken like this. Then the Pharisees replied, Surely you have not been deceived too, have you? Has any one of the authorities or the Pharisees believed in him? But this crowd which does not know the law, they are accursed. Nicodemus, who has gone to Jerusalem before, and who as one of them asked, Our law does not judge people without first giving them a hearing to find out what they are doing, does it? 
They replied, surely you are not also from Galilee, are you? Search and you will see that no prophet is to arise from Galilee. And now for our responsory. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. You are the God of my salvation. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I hope all the day long. O oh my God, in you I trust. Remember, Lord, you are your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. And now for the Benedictus. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who's come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of the servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, as we come together this morning, we give thanks for the worship that took place across our benefits yesterday, remaining ever mindful that we are free to worship of those who are persecuted for their faith. So as we remain mindful of all those who are persecuted, we thank you for those who perhaps came for the first time, for those who are regular attendees, for those who are exploring, and for those who are grounded in their faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for your world, O oh Lord, particularly where there are places of conflict and rife, holding in our hearts and minds the people of Ukraine at this time and that region. For those who are mourning the loss of loved ones, for those who are fleeing from conflict, for those who are separate from loved ones, those who are anxious, those who are scared. Lord, we pray also particularly for the people of the Holy Land of Palestine and Israel, that peace will prevail there. Praying particularly for the women of Iran, whose voices are so often silenced. For Yemen, Myanmar and Afghanistan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for our church this time, Justin, our Archbishop, Rose, our Bishop, Will, our Archdeacon, and for all those who minister across our benefice, across the deanery here in Canterbury, and our diocese. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those this morning who have asked us for prayer for those who may be struggling with their physical health, those struggling maybe with their mental health this day. We lift them to you, O Lord, and for those who are on our benefits prayer sheet at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who are weeping and mourning at this time, for loved ones. Pray particularly for the family, their loved one as I take the funeral later this morning. Praying for them and for others known to us 
who are mourning the loss of loved ones and preparing for funerals, and for those whose anniversary of death falls at this time. We pray for their families as they perhaps share and cherish precious memories. In doing so, Lord, we know that all those believe in, in you will have eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for our cities and towns, praying here for the people of Canterbury, for those working in hospitality, in the entertainment, retail, remaining ever mindful of those this day face unemployment, searching for a job, praying for our students, at schools and universities. And in this time, all those for our emergency services, our local hospital, our hospice, GP surgeries, dental practices, all those frontline key workers, Lord, we pray for them this day. So, Heavenly Father, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the collect for this morning. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory, but he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and for ever. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God our Redeemer show us compassion and love. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Arthur. Yes, good morning. It's lovely to, to all worship here together. Please do join us if you can for our Lenten reflection uh, at six. Otherwise, we will be back tomorrow morning with morning prayer at nine. God bless and have a lovely day and uh, keep well. Bye for now. Bye.